Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good seeing you all again. And if you're liking my series of videos, then maybe think about subscribing to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, it's free. It just means you'll get notified of every time I put a new video up. We'll have a new video every Sunday, covering all aspects of Airsoft as always. Um, without further ado, let's move into today's video. Now today's video has come about because I, I put a post up on social media recently seeing if anybody wanted to see anything particular uh, that I could feature for maybe a newer player, maybe an experienced player. I had a suggestion from more than one person to maybe cover the different types of magazines that you'll come across in Airsoft. So what I thought I'd do is Today we're going to focus on magazines for AEGs or automatic electric guns. Um, these magazines come in all sorts of varieties. I'm just going to cover the basics today so you can tell which ones you want to use and which you prefer. I'm not going to cover gas magazines in this video. I'll look at gas magazines I think in a separate video because we can go a bit in depth with the gas magazines. Maybe look at some rippers and how to basically cure for a gas magazine how to prevent leaks how to fix a leak if you have one but in this video we're going to focus on automatic electric gun or ag magazines we'll look at the different types of magazine that you get we'll look at a few tips for keeping them in good condition and we'll look at the different shapes sizes that type of thing as far as we can so the first magazine we're going to look at for an ag is probably I would say one of the more common magazines that you'll come across in Airsoft. This particular magazine is for an AR pattern replica. So probably quite familiar to a lot of you guys that maybe have Airsoft replicas already or are looking at your first Airsoft replica. Now the majority, the vast majority of, of affordable Airsoft uh, AR based replicas will come with one high cap magazine and that is exactly what this is this is a one that came with a replica but this is what we call a high cap magazine and that basically just stands for high capacity it holds a lot of rounds the normal amount of rounds i would expect a high capacity magazine a high cap to hold is approximately 300 bbs so you should get 300 bbs in one of these magazines uh, this particular one as i say is an ar variant you can get high capacity magazines for, for other variant replicas, such as uh, maybe an MP5, the ARP9 for example comes with a high capacity 9mm stick magazine. Uh, but we'll we'll look at these AR pattern replicas as, as vastly the most common ones you'll come across. Now, with these magazines, there's a lot of advantages to them. Uh, obviously you've got 300 rounds to play with, so you're not going to have to reload as much in game. Uh, that can come in handy, especially if you're doing a lighter loadout or if you haven't got a lot of storage space on your particular rig. You know, if, you, if you're not wearing a plate carrier or you've not decided to go with a chest rig, maybe you're just running a belt or maybe you're just using your pockets on a jacket or trousers. If that's the case, two of these high capacity magazines gives you 600 BBs in total and you only need to reload once. Uh, the higher quality high capacity magazines are, are obviously going to be more reliable and price can vary this particular high capacity magazine is a, a new prol high capacity magazine a high cap these are, are very good I, i've had good success with these they're very affordable around about 11 pounds again it'll hold approximately 300 bbs very simple to use uh, in order to use a high capacity magazine you slide the little door back as you just saw me do and you pour the BBs into the high capacity magazine. So very simple to use. So we'll show that just now. I've got a half open bottle of BBs here that we can use to, to demonstrate. These are by far and away the easiest magazines to load. Try not to spill. So basically we just pour the BBs into the magazine until it's filled up. For a demonstration close the window on the top to stop any moisture getting in there Got a bb trying to escape from me here get rid of that and once the window is closed on the top of the magazine you're good to go now what you might have noticed is is one of the disadvantages of a high capacity magazine when you start running the magazine rattles um, 
often referred to as tactical maracas for obvious reasons. Um, they do make a lot of rattling noises. If you're trying to be stealthy in your particular game, then a high capacity magazine perhaps isn't for you because people will hear you coming as that rattles away while you run. Now I've never found that a particular issue myself. Uh, depends on the type of game you play. Uh, if you like to rush in, noise is, is not really an issue. But anyway, so that, that's, that's the only main disadvantage with them. The other disadvantage that some people don't like is the realism aspect. With a high capacity magazine, you might notice there's a, a wheel on the bottom here. Now, these are the type of high capacity magazines that I tend to use. You also get what are known as flash magazines. On a flash magazine, this base plate here will flip up and you'll have a string cord underneath. Uh, with those to prime the magazine, you pull the cord until your BBs are ready to feed. These are far more common with the wheel on the bottom. Basically what you do is, is you wind this wheel to charge the magazine. Now if you watch the top of the magazine, you will notice that as I wind it, eventually there's a BB at the top of the feed tube. Once that BB is there, give it a few more winds until you notice the tone change. And then that's your magazine primed. That magazine is ready to fire. You can put that in your airsoft replica and that will feed the BBs through. Now, what you will find throughout the game is as that tension, because that's what you're doing when you wind that wheel, you're putting tension on the spring. As that tension wears down, it'll stop feeding. If that's the case, just give it another few winds. You can do that while it's in the replica. That's not a problem and it'll feed again. And you do that every time it stops feeding. So that's a high capacity magazine. That's 300 rounds. Now next up on our list, you'll hear people refer to mid cap magazines. These again are all AR pattern magazines. Just to show you that there is a lot of variety in the, in the style of the magazines you can get for, for ARs. What you might find is, is that some magazines won't feed as well in your particular replica. If you ever have any doubts, you could use your manufacturer's magazines and they should feed in that particular replica. So if you have a Sima, you can use Sima magazines, shouldn't have a problem. G&G, use G&G magazines and so on and so forth. But most magazines should feed without issue in most replicas. But again, as I say, that is trial and error. Uh, I've not gone through every particular magazine and replica combo, but all the magazines that I use here, I've had no issues with feeding. Uh, now these particular magazines, these polymer ones here, these are both by um, Battle Axe. These are very affordable. I think these are about eight pounds per magazine. I've never had any issues with them. I've found them superb. They've always fed well. Uh, good magazines. This is another new pro, but this new pro magazine is metal rather than polymer. And as you'll notice, there's no wheel on the bottom. And because there's no wheel on the bottom, the reason for that is, is because this is what's called a mid cap. A mid cap magazine, unlike a high cap magazine, is mid capacity. So these magazines hold approximately 120 rounds, 120 BBs. Uh, some magazines can hold more, such as the PTS magazines, the newest ones can hold around about 200. Some will hold 190, but on average, you're around about 120 BBs in a mid cap magazine. Now, unlike the high cap magazine, there's no winding involved on, on these magazines. You have to load these. Um, you can load them by hand by pushing one BB in a time. The easiest option is to use a speed loader. You've probably heard that term before. So when we refer to speed loaders, you've got a number of different options, which I have a few here. You have this kind of speed loader. This kind of speed loader you commonly receive for free with some replicas. Uh, I would normally use a speed loader like this for smaller duties such as sniper magazines or pistol magazines. Again, you only get about 100 rounds in one of these. Uh, these magazines hold 120. Very simple to use. You pour the BBs into the top, close the lid up, press the button. Basically the way it works is you push that into the nozzle. Every time you push that, it's gonna push some BBs into the magazine. But as I say, not really suitable with that one for loading a mid-cap magazine. It's gonna take you a long time. 
Now the quickest option is an Odin style speed loader. The Odin style speed loaders are, are very rapid to use. Um, basically with these ones, these are just clipped in. Clip the magazine into the speed loader. Fill the speed loader full of BBs through the window at the top. And then wind the crank round and round. That'll load up your magazines. You can put a lot of rounds in one of these speed loaders. They hold a lot of BBs and fill up quite a number of magazines before you have to worry about reloading the speed loader. So that is by far and away the best option for these AR pattern ones. Now at the moment, you will come across 3D printed options for, for these speed loaders that make them adapt to other types of replica magazines. But these are primarily made for reloading AR pattern replica magazines. Uh, these are known as a Stanag magazine. These magazines will be used not just on ARs, but they are used on, on other replicas. But obviously double check that before you invest in one of these. And if you do get one of these, see if you can get a, 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 an adapter so it fits your particular type of magazine, the replica you're using. And then the final type of speed loader that we have is this type of speed loader. Now I've always been a big fan of these speed loaders. Very similar in operation to the smaller speed loader, but you might notice it's the same size as a Stanag magazine or an AR pattern rifle magazine. And the good thing about this is if you are carrying pouches for these magazines, this will fit in a pouch. Holds a lot of BBs, very simple to use. You open the slider there, fill the BBs into the speed loader, clothe the slider, and then you've got your little push rod. And exactly the same as this speed loader, push the speed loader into the, into the magazine, and every time you depress this, you're gonna be putting BBs in your magazine. Now, the trick with loading these mid caps is you could try to count every round that you put in, every BB that goes in. The best thing to do is, generally, it'll eventually get harder and harder to push the BBs in. When you get quite a bit of resistance on your speed loader, whether you're winding or pushing one of these plungers, is to stop at that point and your, your mid cap magazine is full. So that's mid capacity magazines and obviously speed loaders that would be required in order to load those magazines. And as I say, lots of different designs, lots of different manufacturers, trial and error with manufacturers uh, to see which one's feeding your particular replica. But in my case, I've had no problem with the new Pro mid cap, the new Pro high cap, or these Battle Axe magazines that are mid caps, they've been fine. Now, finally on the list, we have what is called a low cap. So the high cap, 300 BBs, you have to wind the tension on it or pull a flash cord to get the tension on it. Mid cap, 120 rounds, 120 BBs approximately, some have slightly more. Then we get to low cap magazines. Now just like the mid cap magazine, there's no tension winder. These magazines have to be loaded with a speed loader, just the same. Pop it in, push your BBs in. But as the name suggests, high capacity, mid capacity, low capacity. This particular one is a Lonex low capacity magazine. These magazines will normally hold the same number of BBs as the equivalent real steel magazine would hold. So this magazine will be designed to hold 30 rounds. So this will hold 30 BBs, um, which if depending again on what type of game you're playing if you're playing uh, military simulations or mill sims in some of those games they have very strict rules and the replicas that you use have to emulate what the real steel rifles would do uh, so for that reason they'll only allow low cap magazines and a low cap will be 30 rounds now you do get some slight discrepancies in that these new pro magazines have a switch on them that enables you to change them between low cap and mid cap, so it'll hold 120 rounds when it's in mid cap, and if you flick the switch to low cap, it'll change to 30 rounds, so 30 BBs. So there we have it. Those are the most common terms you'll hear. High cap, mid cap, low cap. Now, I don't personally use low caps. They're more for photos, that type of thing. 
I don't tend to use them. Mid caps are definitely my favorite. The advantages of each of these, very briefly, is high cap, obviously you don't have to reload and you don't have to carry as many magazines because you've got a lot of BBs in one magazine. Reliable, no problems, look realistic, apart from if you've got the wheel on the bottom. But again, you know, I don't really notice that when I'm playing. Mid cap, lots of advantages, they feed all the way through until they're empty on a good quality mid cap magazine they hold 120 rounds so that's usually enough but you are going to have to reload during the day so you'll need to carry more mid caps than you would high caps so it's added weight you take a little bit longer to reload these unless you're using a, a rapid speed loader again with these speed loaders it makes it quick but it still takes a while depending on how many magazines you're loading uh, but again, they usually feed fantastic. They don't rattle, unlike the tactical maraca there. Uh, these won't rattle because they're just under spring tension. So you can fill these magazines to the top and you'll not get any rattle off it. So really lots of advantages to mid caps. But again, the main downside is you'll have to carry more of those than you would high caps. Low caps, well, they have all the advantages of a mid cap but they only hold 30 BBs. So if you're playing a skirmish, you're gonna need a lot of these, depending on how you play. If you're playing DMR and you're only firing a couple of shots per game, then a low cap may be fine. Uh, but if you're firing a lot of full auto, or you're firing a lot of semi-auto, you know, a lot of rounds going down range, then a low cap, you're gonna to have to carry a lot of them. And if you like changing magazine, if you like realism, then maybe a low caps for you. You only get 30 rounds like the real thing. You know, you, you'd be changing magazine quite regular. Um, again, these vary in price depending on what manufacturer you go with. But the main disadvantage of a low cap magazine is as the name suggests, it doesn't hold many BBs. You're gonna need quite a few of them depending on how many shots you tend to fire. So them are the main ones you'll come across. High cap, mid cap, low cap. Now. Just to give you an example of, of other replicas, this is an MP5 mid cap. There's no winder on it. It's a mid cap magazine. So again, it has all the advantages of a mid cap magazine. It's a metal magazine in this case, like the real thing. And this mid cap holds about 90 rounds. Um, but again, you've got to check on your own particular replica because the physical size of the magazine they're working with to emulate the real steel you can't fit as many as many BBs in there. So that mid cap magazine will hold 90 rounds. This is a mid capacity magazine, a mid cap off an M14 based replica. Again, it's a full metal magazine. Again, just like the MP5 and just like the AR, same theory, push that into the feed and push your BBs in. You'll notice there's a little notch in the top, get it through the notch and then start feeding them in. So, you know, th this one holds 150 rounds, you know. Uh, it, it, physically, it doesn't look much different in size, you know, apart from the height of an AR replica one, but these actually hold 150 in their mid-cap magazines. Um, so yeah, you know, they, they physically look different, the latching mechanism's different, but the, the theory is the same. They're mid-caps, so they don't have a winder, they don't hold as many rounds as a high cap. You can get high caps in MP5 magazines, but they would have the wheel on the bottom the same as this high capacity magazine. A few little differences is, is if you like sniping, bolt action rifles, this is a magazine off of bolt action. You don't tend to get high capacity magazines for bolt actions, no winder. These don't hold a lot of rounds at all. This one holds 20. I think some of my BSR magazines hold about 30. And that's usually about your maximum. But again, you need a speed loader to load them just the same. You can get adapters that go on the side, but you know, you're fine with one of these smaller speed loaders and just push the BBs in. Um, so again, that's a, a slight discrepancy is your sniper magazines. And then the last, but not least, you will see some of these. Uh, this is a drum magazine. This is a battle axe drum magazine. Now on these magazines, just like Really, just think of it as, a, as an extreme high cap. Um, you have a, a window fill, just like you have on the high cap magazine. 
and you pour BBs into it until it's full. Some of them will be wind up, some of the G&G &G ones have a wind on the front, which is the same idea as the wheel on the bottom, you're just tensioning up a spring. This particular one is electric, so you press the button on the front, works off a battery, press the button until your BBs start to feed, let go of the button. Some of the drum magazines work off sound, particularly on the LMGs. I've had mixed results with this Battle Axe drum magazine, which is based for an AR pattern rifle. Um, it tends to feed quite slowly on the electrical system standard. It may be something I'll look into in the future to change or maybe see if I can improve it. But at the moment, I, I just tend to use this for photos these days. In game, it's a little bit slow to feed. Um, not the best that you can get. But again, try different drum magazines if I find drum magazines. Some people have had a lot of success with these. Some people haven't. It is certainly usable. I've used it in game quite a few times, but I tend to prefer mid caps or high caps if I'm running a light loadout. If I'm running a battle belt, then I'll tend to go with a high cap. So one other thing to, to consider when you're using these magazines, especially with mid caps, you may notice there's a little switch on the top of the magazine there. Now that's what keeps the BBs in. That gets depressed and pulled back when the magazine's in. That allows them to feed. You want to detension your springs at the end of the day. So pull this switch back. That'll allow the BBs to shoot out. I tend to empty all the BBs out of my high cap, especially if you're using bio BBs. Just empty them out at the end of the day. With your mid caps, you don't want to keep your springs under tension. That can damage the springs, make them not as strong, make them not feed as well. Same with the low caps, um, they're on a spring tension. So again, the little switch that's, that looks like a switch, you can pull that back. If you pull that back, that will allow all the BBs to come flying out. And that will basically detension the magazine. I suggest to do it upside down when you do it. Maybe have some eye protection on, they can come out with a little bit of force when they spray out. So like I say, don't point it at your face when you do it let them go on the floor or ideally back into your bottle of bb's um, some people don't like to to use them once they've been in a magazine that's fine i don't tend to do that either i usually put them straight in the bin out of the magazine and then that's done do that with all magazines as you can see on the mp5 magazine you've got the little switch there as well so when you're finished for the day pull that back let the bb's out detension the spring and that's you ready to reload them at your next game okay so i hope that's cleared up some details about different magazines all you need to remember is high cap lots of bbs rattles you have to tension the spring with a wheel or a pull cord mid cap in between medium capacity 120 or so bbs you have to fill it with a speed loader ideally to make life easier they don't rattle they feed reliably they're affordable and you can get them in lots of different designs but you'll need more of them depending on how trigger happy you are low capacity more for realism same advantages of a mid cap except it doesn't hold as many bbs and again you know you're probably going to need to change quite regularly so them your major differences 30 rounds 120 rounds 300 rounds so I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you're new to the game, I hope it's cleared up some of the terminology we use, like speed loaders, high caps, mid caps, low caps, drum magazines. I hope that's cleared that up for you. If you have any other questions or if you have any input for this video, then as I said before, drop me a comment and I'll always get back to you. And if you are enjoying my videos, as always, subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting a new video out every Sunday. If I can't get it out on the Sunday, I'll always put the video out early, never late. But apart from that, I'll hope to see you in the next one.